Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? So today what I'm going to show you is how I tie um, just a basic squirrel tail jig. Squirrel tail is probably one of the most underused materials that you'll find nowadays. Um, back when I was a kid, squirrel tail was a thing. You'd, you'd find a squirrel on the side of the road and if it was ran over, you'd get its tail and use it to tie trout flies, bluegill flies, um, and jigs. For one reason, it's free. So just a basic squirrel tail. Um, this particular one is brown. The one I'm going to be using uh, for this video is a dyed pink, which you can buy at probably about any place that sells fly tying or jig tying uh, materials. So part of the problem with this is these are not a hollow hair on a squirrel tail. Some people think they are, but they're not. So therefore, they're great because they repel water and they dry fast, but um, they don't tend to fan out real good. And what I mean is when you tie it to a hook, in this case, we're going to be tying a 32nd ounce um, jig, with a number six steelhead hook. You can see how this jig, the, the hair just kind of lays along the shank of the hook. So you have to do something to make the tail have some body to it. And when I say body, I mean so that it does this. And when you look at it from the back, you'll see that it's opened right up where this one is just kind of back there, which the thin profile will work. But I tend to like things that have a little more body to them. And then when they pull through the water, they they move and, and just have a little better action. So I'm going to show you how to achieve this when you're using a squirrel tail. And then how I tie the, the collar off on them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a 32nd ounce pink head that I have here. And this has a number six steelhead hook on it. So how I start this is I'm just going to do a little thread wrap right there. But before I do that, because squirrel hair, like any like deer hair or calf tail or kip tail, um, kip tail is calf tail. So just so you know, when you're if you're going to buy it, it'll want to spin around the shank of the hook. So I always start with a little bit of glue. There's always people that say, oh, you don't need glue. Well, I learned to tie by using glue. So I use glue. Um, we'll just start. and We're just going to make a few wraps. And you can probably see how the, the super glue pushes its way back. And that's okay because we want it to be back there just a little bit. We'll cut that tag off. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do, if we were to just wrap this back forward and put the squirrel tail on, we would end up with a jig that looks like this. Again, which is fine and will work, but when that gets wet, that's going to be pretty thin in the water. And we want to achieve just a fuller body look. Even if you're going to do a chenille wrap, which we can do later, but today I'm just going to show you the collar, the very basic um, collared jig. So what we'll do is we're going to work this back. And I usually go back about maybe a quarter of an inch is a good starting point. Um, you, can, you can practice with this and do it however you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just build a thread dam. And all a thread dam is, is I'm going to start making a little pile of thread right here. And the super glue will help that pile. And as you can see, that's building. So the thread is starting to flatten out on the shank of the hook. So what I'll do is I will add just a little bit of super glue to that. And that way, as I wrap this, it will harden and the thread dam will get bigger. And I'll wrap in an X. And now you can see we've got a pretty good, a pretty good bump right there. Pretty good thread dam right there. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to take a piece of this or just a small clump of this 
um, calf tail, not calf tail, excuse me, squirrel tail. And I'm going to pinch off about that much. And yeah, we'll do a little bigger, just a little bit bigger pinch. And then I give it a twist. And what that does is it gets all the hairs together and I can just cut it off of there without a problem. So what you'll get when you're using real animal hair is there's always a dander. I don't know if you can see that falling out of there. I try to get all that out of there because that just bulks up the end of the the end of the jig and then any of these hairs that are a little bit longer I like to kind of clean those up because this squirrel tail will move around the shank of the hook a lot so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pinch it like this and I'm going to measure and that looks pretty good right there and when I say measure I'm measuring with my fingers so I'll pinch it with this hand and now you're going to see that this hair the squirrel tail is going to be over the jig, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do, because I'm going to cut that off afterwards, I'm going to do two loose wraps on this. And you can see when you pull that how it wants to move around the shank of the hook. And I'm just going to let it move. And you can see that with that thread dam there, it's already flaring that tail. And if you push down on the top of it. But I try to get all the hair fibers where they're straight. Um, I want them to come all the way around the hook and just try to get it proportionate as much as possible all the way around the hook and that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to wrap it tight all the way to the head of the jig to where it hits the lead. And you'll see I've got all this hair on here and I'm going to show you how to deal with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap back to where the edge of that thread dam is and you'll see these hairs as I get to that lump that I made with thread how it opens this right up and you don't want to go over if you go over see what happens you'll know if you go over that thread dam so you just come up to the edge of that thread dam and call that good and then I think what I'll do on this jig just because it'll look kind of good is I've got a little piece of red flashaboo here all, all this material is is just basic flashaboo you can buy it at any jig tying store fly shop whatever and I've got a little piece of it here and I'm going to double it up and at this point I have my thread moved up to up to the head of the jig and I'm just going to set this on there and I'm going to kind of measure it I'm going to hold it on there and I'm going to do a loose wrap so it doesn't pull it around the side because when you're tying these jigs, the, the material always wants to rotate in the direction that you tie. So I'm going to tie this in. I'm going to go back to the thread dam, tie it in. Now I've got a loop right here. This loop, I'm going to pull this forward like this and now I'll wrap it back. And that way I've got all my flashaboo on the base of that hook right there on the bottom basically it's the, it will be the bottom because this is the side the fish will see so we'll do that wrap it in good now i'm going to do the whip finish if you don't have a whip finish tool you can do a half hitch um, but i i'll use a whip finish tool and just give it about five or six good wraps pull it out and then i am going to cut that off and now you can see that we have this jig. Let me let me cut this flash off here. And now we've got this this flash in here, and you can see the hair. And as I said, the flash. This is how the this is how a crappie is going to see your jig. They don't they don't see the jig all pretty in a vise. They see the bottom of it. So. And because they feed up, they'll see that flash. So now what we're going to do is we need to get rid of this hair because it's just not, it doesn't serve a purpose. It's just in the way. So how I get rid of that is I take, I hold the jig in my hand like this and I take this razor blade, <coughs> excuse me. And then what I do is I go right between the, where I tied the thread to the jig head. And I just push down gently and rotate it along the edge of that thread. And you'll see it'll clear that. It'll clear that right off. 
and I do it light enough where it cuts the hair, but not too hard where it cuts the paint. <coughs> Excuse me. And then cutting this all off, cleaning that up good. And this is how I do bucktails and, and um, calf tails or kip tails and everything. And now you can see that that head <coughs> is nice and clean. I got a little bit left right there. Let me get that. There we go. There. And now all you need, you could you can glue this in any number of ways. You could just put some super glue on it if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to use um, some head cement, some fly head cement. But I also use at times I will use the UV... Um, glue where you need the light the uv light like this and and then you'll dry the glue but since we're doing just a basic jig and i want to show you with the least amount of materials just this head cement and i just take you can use i have a bodkin here you can use a toothpick dip it in there put that on top of those threads and that will soak right down into the squirrel tail through the thread and it will hold it just fine And this glue is waterproof, so it works really well. I got a couple of little, little long flashaboos there. But that's it. Um, you can see it's got a nice, nice body, nice wide open uh, spread on the, on the squirrel hair compared to just the standard one. And it just gives the bait a little bigger profile in the water. And they're super easy to make, really. I mean, you just need some thread and some squirrel tail and a jig head. I mean, you don't even have to put the flash in. The flash is just something that that um, will just add a little sparkle to it in the water. And uh, you know, a lot of times I tie them. I don't even I don't even put any flash in them. I just tie them like this. They're small. Bluegills love them. Crappie absolutely love them. And it's simple and basic. So <clears throat> if you like the content, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll have some more uh, jig things on here as well as I'm going to show you some more of my ornate, more difficult type of things we tie. We're going to work our way into that. But I just wanted to get you through this basic, basic jigs, things that are easy to tie and easy to learn on so that when you get the hang of it and we get to the more difficult ones, you're able to do it. So again, thanks for watching and I hope you find this useful.